Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone once again to the Wednesday night uh, Bible study here at Glassport Assembly. I hope everyone is doing well uh, tonight. Uh, again, we are going to, uh, I believe Pastor is still preaching on the Sermon on the Mount. So uh, stay tuned for another lesson and uh, get prepared. Uh, you know, get your hearts prepared. Let's get our hearts prepared now to uh, to hear the word that is going to be bringing forth. So uh, let's pray. Father God, as we come before you, Lord, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing, all that you have will continue to do, Lord, as long as we're faithful to you. Father God, I would just ask you now to uh, uh, unstop our ears, Lord. And Lord, just move upon our spirit. Lord, that we may really hear the word that is being spoken tonight, Lord. Father God, let it penetrate. Let it go in, Lord. Let us let us just, you know, be ministered by the word tonight, Lord. And Lord, I just uplift everyone that is listening here tonight, Lord. If you're not feeling well or if you've had a hard day or whatever the circumstances may be, remember that God is right beside you. God will never leave you, Lord. God will never forsake you. So, Lord, I just lift those up to you tonight, Lord, and I just ask your blessings upon them, Father God. Lord, move upon them and touch them, Lord. I know that this is a trying time for many people. I know that as the months have gone by, it's become more and more difficult, Lord. But, Lord, I know that you are in control of all things. Father God, your word tells us that you won't give us anything more than what we can handle. So, Lord, I would just ask you now to bless those that are listening here tonight, Lord. Lord, stir up their spirit within them, Father God, and let them know that you are not only with them, Lord, but you, you're there to sympathize. You're there to be part of what they are going through, Lord, as long as they're willing to look to you. So, Lord, I just ask you to bless the word tonight, Lord, as it goes forth. Bless our pastor, Father God as he delivers the message, Lord. And Father God, bless all those that are out there listening tonight. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> all right. Well, uh, thank you, Greg, and appreciate it. And I'd like to just welcome you, welcome everyone here to another Wednesday night. Uh, hopefully we're coming in the... In the on the stretch, we're making that final turn. Uh, we're getting ready to to re-enter into uh, church life, and so uh, there will be a Facebook message that will either be coming out tonight or tomorrow about uh, our gathering, uh, our gathering together as as a church. So, uh, so please uh, please make sure that you watch that. Um, if you have any questions don't hesitate to call us let us know we'll be happy we want you to know uh, what what certainly is go going on so that will be on either later on tonight or tomorrow a Facebook message so you know we're in the uh, in a series on the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew uh, found in Matthew chapter 5 through 7 so if you got your Bible I uh, certainly hope that you do this is a even though it's kind of a different Bible study uh, a virtual Bible study or live stream Bible study. I'm not quite sure what to call it, but it's a Bible study. And so to have a Bible study, well, we got to have a Bible. So open up your Bibles. And so we're going to be looking at the God's word. Uh, Jesus preached a sermon uh, to show what kingdom life looks like, what, it, what, what living in the kingdom of God looks like, you know, how the gospel is lived out. Okay, and that's what the Bible really is, is for. It, it helps us to, you know, to walk it out, what the good news is, and how it applies to our lives. And so, you know, we've been uh, walking through this sermon, beginning with the, the uh, um, in chapter five with the beatitudes, and and then we looked at what true righteousness really looks like in this world, and then, and then we went on to chapter six, and we began to look at. Uh, kingdom worship and the motives that drives uh, our kingdom worship uh, in our giving, in our praying, and in our fasting is what we talked about last week. I hope that was a blessing to you. 
and maybe you fasted maybe for the first time. So if you did, uh, please, why don't you let us know, why don't you give a little comment if, if maybe during this last week, uh, maybe the first time you've ever fasted, and, and so why don't you just let us know about that, we would appreciate that. And so this brings us to Matthew's, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. And these are some great, great verses, you know. I mean, well, all the Bible's great. All the Bible's great. But these, these verses are just amazing. And we're going to be looking at these three verses. So it begins to read in verse 19, Matthew 6, verse 19. It says, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that's just a really a profound verse. I mean, that is something we really need to get a handle on so we're going to be really kind of sent really kind of kind of uh, um, centering on really what that means what that looks like and, and so let, let let's pray before we get started tonight father we thank you for your word uh, god this is your word and we believe and we and we trust it and these are living words because they come alive in christ in us lord let your word come alive in us let it be living and active and moving your word is heaven's true, tr true treasure that has come to us. And Lord, we just ask that you'd open our hearts and minds to what you'd have to say to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And so Jesus here, uh, indirectly or directly, whichever way you might want to look at it, promises true riches, true treasures, actually to all. Uh, now, I want to say something that maybe might seem a little off or a little a little out there but Jesus wants you and I to be rich okay yeah I said it Jesus Jesus wants you and I to be rich okay Woo amen isn't that good isn't that good news I mean we'll all take that good good news but before you think I'm heading off to some prosperity teaching and you know let me explain what I believe that is being said here yes Jesus wants you to be rich now think about that for a moment. Let, you know, let it fill your thoughts. What does that look like to you to be rich? What, what does that look like to you? So just take a moment and just think about it. Not too long. Well, perhaps maybe all of us kind of, kind of got a little different idea or maybe what that might look like. And when you think of riches, do you think of Lots of money, lots of things, possessions. How about maybe even fame or a, a popularity? Cars, big houses. What does that look like to you? And many times, uh, you know, these things, you know, money, possessions, cars, fame, etc. It is what these things represent that mean really most to us. And oftentimes what these things mean to us is that satisfaction success. I'm important. I am significant. Okay? You know, you, know, you see, uh, the world that we live in, uh, uh, you know, rich is code for what? For, for many, is being happy. It's being success. It's the sign of success. And our definition of rich, you know, what are we looking for in happiness? Well, if I could just have what, one more thing, uh, I, I would be happy. If I could just get there or get to wherever, you know, you think you need to be, I'd be happy. Or if I could be like that one, okay, I would, I would truly be happy. I want you to think about this as well. I'm kind of laying just, you know, laying some stuff out here for you just to be thinking, thinking about. The things that we think will bring happiness, now just think about that, are really the same things that we cannot keep or will last. You know, those things that we think that I got to have that to be happy or I got to have that person, I got to have that girl, got to have that boy, you got to have that job, got to have that house, got to have that car, okay? Well, the thing is, is that none of these things really last. Uh, you know, either they're going to end up, end up in a landfill, which is a, I guess, 
a proper word for a dump, <laughs> okay? Uh, or they're going to end up in someone else's house. Just think about that. You know? Or someone else is going to be driving your car or, or whatever, okay? You know, Jesus says here, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, okay? Where moth rust destroy, where thieves break in. And so, um, when you think of riches, you know, true riches, you know, what comes to your mind? Is it riches that can be deposited uh, in the first world bank? Okay, and maybe one day there might be a first world bank, and all of our and all of our riches and all the things that we possess will end up in the first world bank, or hidden underneath your mattress. How about that? Maybe that's where you have all your treasure. What do you think, Jesse? Is that where you have all yours? Underneath your mattress? Okay. Or is it riches and treasure deposited in the, in the spiritual trust and loan? <laughs> okay. Or heaven, spiritual trust and loan. Okay. You know, where Jesus says, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys or where thieves cannot break in and steal. Now, I'm not saying this, so, so you know, we need to notice what Jesus is not saying here, because we, sometimes we imply or infer that he's saying things he's really, he's really not saying here. And so let's, you know, Jesus is not saying there's anything wrong with things, possessions. Jesus is not saying that we shouldn't have things, that we shouldn't save, uh, we shouldn't maybe invest uh, you know, we shouldn't make plans for the future. Uh, Jesus is not saying that we cannot enjoy uh, material things. I mean, God has given this, the earth to, to enjoy. And, and so he's not telling us that we can, can't um, enjoy these things. But what Jesus is saying here, he says the problem isn't those things. That's not... The problem, he said, the problem is, is what? Is your attitude, or, or, more, or more clearly, if the problem is, is your heart towards these things. Okay? It's, it's, it's your heart towards these things. And the problem is the, is, is the human heart and how we handle it. And quite frankly, uh, you know, most of us really can't handle a lot of these things. Uh, I remember hearing a story of... Uh, now this is many, many years ago, with the lottery has been around forever for, and forever, but I remember uh, one particular, and I, I don't know all the, the, uh, the uh, details, the person's name, but they won $6 million, okay? And, and um, you know, I mean, it's like, wow, wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah, $6 million, but, but it was in within a year, I, I, I believe, that this, this money totally ruined this guy's life. That wasn't the money that ruined his life. It was his attitude or his heart about what he thought that this money could give him. And actually what it ended up doing, it ended up really destroying his life. Okay, And, and so, uh, you know, man has a great tendency to turn good things into ul ultimate things. It's the ultimate you know, and there are a lot of good things that God has given. And yet we have a tendency to do that, to turn the good things into what? Into ultimate things. That's the ultimate thing, and I've got to have it, you know. And, 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 and they actually have, actually find out that they really have power over our lives. And in verse 24, the same chapter in Matthew 6, 24, Jesus says, no one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay. And so elsewhere he says this here, because of the love of this world, the Bible tells us, because of the love of the things of this world, you know, it's just not just the world itself, but the world represents the things of this world, because of our love and because of what happens to our hearts, the Bible says that many, the, many hearts will actually grow cold. Okay? Many people will fall away because of the love of the things of this world. Okay? And, and, so, and so the lie is, is that the enemy wants to sell to you is that if you obtain and maintain all that you desire, 
of the riches of this world, the fame, the glory, etc., that you will be fulfilled and happy. That's that's kind of the the lie. Okay, and you know, truth is that you know that many have all these things, and yet they're still empty and lost. You know, we see you know we see this. You know, people who have have really what they, you know, have the world by the tail or whatever expression. They got everything. They got cars and mansions and money and fame and glory. And they have, you know, you know, it, you know any person that which they might want. And yet we read so many times um, of them committing suicide or they're addicted to to certain things. OK. And, and so, you know, you know, some of the, you know, I'm sure you know that some of the happiest people that I've ever uh, ever known and, and do know have very little things of this world, okay? And, and so, um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that because we have little things that we're more pious, we're more godly or whatever. Uh, and so here's the, here's the principle that Jesus is really trying to to share, it's a kingdom principle, okay? It's a principle that he's really teaching, that genuine happiness, okay? And I remind you of the Beatitudes, okay? Blessed is what? The poor in spirit. That word there, blessed, could be what? Happy. Happy are the poor in spirit, for they should what? Okay? You know, happy are the meek. Happy are those who hunger and thirst. So, you know, genuine happiness does not depend upon earthly treasure, or earthly wealth, happiness actually depends upon a deep, deep, and a deeper and a lasting wealth. In verse 20, for laying up yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust uh, cannot destroy and where thieves cannot break in. And so, uh, you know, Jesus isn't teaching that it's better to be poor, <laughs> in which some people think that. Some people think that Jesus is teaching that it's better to be poor, okay? Well, you know, certainly poor has its challenges, but also rich has its challenges. Okay? Uh, you know, of course, if you've never been rich, then perhaps you don't know that challenge. But, but maybe, uh, maybe it's better that you don't know that challenge. Like I said, many times people who have gone into fame and glory and great wealth, you know, their, their lives are just turned upside down. So Jesus isn't saying it's better to be poor in this world. Neither is he teaching that merely being rich makes one evil. He doesn't. Die. Both rich and poor will not find meaning in earthly treasures and riches. That's what he's teaching. Rich or poor, you know, black or white, male or female, you know, whatever the case might be, is that you know, we'll never find what we need in our hearts, what we need inside here, through earthen, earthen treasures and riches. You know, that's really kind of what he's, he, he's talking about. You know, that true happiness is to, is, to, uh, is to really invest your life, if you would. You know, he's talking about, you know, treasures in heaven. You know, you're making investment, making a deposits, okay? And so true ha happiness comes when we invest our lives in the pursuit of the things of God. In whatever state that you might be, you know, whatever place that where, where, where you might be, whatever job that you might have, whatever neighborhood that you live in, you know, whoever your parents might, might be, okay, is that, is that we are called to what? To, you know, to invest our, our lives, okay, for the glory of God. Philippians 4, 11 through 14 kind of really speaks about this. And so, you know, let us read together Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Uh, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Okay, all right. Now I know, now you might be thinking, well, I'd be content if I have all I want. <laughs> I caution you. I mean, do you really know what, you, you know, you really don't know that, okay? But anyway, for I know how to be abased, a base would be, I know how to be in need or in want. And I also know how to abound. To have, you know, to have everything. To have it all. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer. I can do all things. Now, interesting. That's, you know, we sometimes pull that verse out and... You know, we pull that verse out and we just apply it to whatever we want to apply it to. 
And there again, I know that scriptures, many scriptures have multiple applications of it. Okay, and we thank God that He supplies strength. But look at the context of what He's talking about: of uh, being content in one's in one's place with what God has given them, not allowing, you know, riches or poor to be able to affect them. He says, because let me tell you, you need the strength of God to be able to. You know, to not allow the riches of the world to overwhelm you and to overtake you just as much as the poor person needs the strength of God that they do not lust after things that they desire to have. And would go to sometimes dangerous lengths, even, even unlawful lengths to get what they want. And so I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, and, and so, you know, Whatever you know, state that we're in, you know, whether you know whether not rich or poor or, or whatever, you know, we, we need the strength of God. We need our focus needs to be centered upon Christ, and when that is, then He gives us strength to walk it out in whatever our setting is. You know, whether or not we are uh, abounding, whether or not it's it's the good times, or whether or not it's what the bad times. Remember the show Good Times? You know, I mean, it wasn't good times, okay? They were poor. They were, you know, ghetto and so forth, okay? And so, so we need God, we need God to help us with this, amen? And so kingdom truth, I'm going to share with you a kingdom truth. And this is for happiness and success. Well, I don't have to come up with, you, you come up with it because Jesus comes up with it for ourselves. Verse 21, this is the, this is the truth the kingdom truth for happiness success. And he says this here, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Right. Okay. And so we're going to really look at, you know, kind of really dive into this verse and see the application to, into your life. If we have treasure in heaven, listen to me, listen. If, if you have treasure in heaven, your heart must be there also. You see how they're attached. Treasure your heart. You can't have treasure in heaven unless, you know, but that's not attached to your heart because that's the motive, okay? That's, okay? Heart means, you know, means it's not speaking about the organ. It's not speaking about emotions and so forth. It's actually, that word heart is translated literally this. It means to the seat of oneself. Now, let me explain that. It is where the entirety of who you are rests in. It is where you're centered. Have you ever uh, sit on a rocky chair that you think you're going to fall? <laughs> okay. You know, it's not very comfortable, right? You know, we want to be seated and kind of secure. We're steady. We're centered. Okay. You know, <clears throat> so what is it that you, that you set yourself upon? Is it, you know, and it comes from, it's whatever is in your heart. So if your heart is all about what? Earthen treasures, earthen riches, then, then you're really not, you know, really, you know, you know you're, you're, you're really shaky. There's really not going to be much, much of that in heaven, okay? Okay, but if you are, if you are seated or centered upon that your heart is centered upon Christ then then you're going to have all kinds of all kinds of treasure you see treasure that that last is found where God is treasure that will last treasure that will endure treasure that that moth can't eat up have you ever had moths you go into a closet you haven't been there for a long time and find moths and they've eaten up through a sweater or a jacket or whatever okay all right and so your, you see, treasure that last is, fa is fa found where God is, and that is where our heart needs to be also. So what treasure that is stored up, now listen, now what treasure that is stored up in heaven comes from what your life is centered upon. Okay. What treasure that you have in heaven will, 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 will be what your life is centered upon or what your heart is seated upon. In Matthew uh, 13, 44, just one verse, it's, uh, Jesus shares a, actually a series of parables that, that really speaks about this. And he says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. 
And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and, and buys the field. So here, Jesus talks about a man who is walking along. He's walking in a field. And he comes upon this incredible treasure. Okay? And, and he gives himself all that he has. He, he gives himself to everything that he has. All his heart. Okay? To possess this treasure. So why could this man in this parable give all that he had, his heart to have this treasure? It's the same reason, and listen, it's the same reason why you and I need to give all that we have. You see, we need to give our whole heart. It's, it's because of this. Listen to this here. This, this is profound, okay? That Jesus is God's treasure, okay? Jesus is the treasure for you and I. And when we receive God's treasure, we're changed, Right? We're changed. Rich or poor, we're changed. Right? Our hearts are changed. Our perspectives change. Our values change. Or at least they, they should. Our treasures change. Amen. Come on. Our treasure, what we treasure changes. Our, our lives are changed. Uh, you know, we're, you know, it's like we are realigned, if you would, to, to, uh, to things that are heavenly, that have purpose. The Apostle Paul in, in Colossians uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, listen, uh, listen to these words. If you got your Bible, turn there with me. I'm flipping there myself, okay, so I can find it. I don't have it all. I would have 10 pages of notes if I have all the scriptures written out. Uh, um, Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If then, notice the first, the first two, the first word, if. Boy, that's a powerful word. If. If. Then you were raised with Christ. What does that mean? Being born again. You found the treasure. The treasure of treasures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, he's the treasure of all treasures. And what? You seek those things which are what? Above. Is that kind of sound like Jesus here is talking here? That, 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 that those of us who are kingdom followers, okay, those of us who are following the king, okay. now maybe when you weren't following the king, yeah, all you cared about was laying up treasures. All you cared about was the treasures of this world. What you could get, what you could obtain, what you could buy, what you could sell. But when Christ came into your heart, didn't things just kind of change? Now, maybe not all of a sudden. And sometimes, all of a sudden, you know. For some, conversion is a radical transformation. For others, it's a gradual thing. Well, you know, both are saved, right? You know, both, both love God. And so, if then... Oh, I lost my place. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Does that sound like things that are going to be stored up? You know, things that are in heaven, treasures in heaven perhaps, where Christ is seating at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above. What do you spend your time, your day thinking about? Okay. You know, can we just be, just be honest sometimes? You know, are we thinking more about the things that we don't have? The things that we want to have? Are we thinking, or are we thinking about the things that God is doing in our lives? The transformation, the change, the values, perspectives, the meaning of life, the purpose of life. Calling, ministry, serving God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Well, we're still earthly, you know. You've heard the expression, you know, we got some people are so heavily minded, they're no earthly good, okay? But, but that's not really what this is saying. You know, don't be so earthly minded that you're no heavenly good. How about that? Well, we like the other one, you know, we like, you know, the, you know we sometimes we, you know, we persecute the ones who are a little bit more heavenly minded, okay? Well, there's nothing wrong with being heavenly minded. Okay, and so look what it says. For you died, and there was a resurrection. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Right? 
For your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. And there's going to be some other things that are going to appear too. Your treasures. Or the lack of your treasures. I was getting a little bit, getting a little bit really quiet in church right now. And maybe it's getting a little quiet in your room right now. Okay. Back, in, back to Matthew chapter 13. There's another little parable. A little. Boy, these are like nuggets. Boy, these are like, these are like spiritual hang, you know, hang, hang grenades. Okay. You know, spiritual bombs, man. To, whoosh, they go out and just, oh, I wish I hadn't read that. You know, or something like that. But once you read it, ha! You're obligated to it, right? It says in Matthew 13, verses 45, And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. Well, what would you do if you just found just a pile of beautiful pearls? And, and so what did he do? The king, uh, you know, he, he uh, who when he had found it, won one pearl of great price, you know, thinking of the Lord of the Rings, you know, what was that, what, what, what was the one star that, that, that one stone, hey, come on, somebody, anybody's watched Lord of the Rings fan, what is that, what is that, what, what was that one stone that, that represented all their wealth and all, uh, it was, it was the Hobbit, it was in the Hobbit, yeah, in the Hobbit, yeah, the one stone, oh, Arken, Arken. the Arkenstone, the Arkenstone, and, 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 and they would give everything, and they'd give their lives in pursuit of that, right, anyway, sorry about that, Okay, and let's just keep on reading. Who, uh, when they found it, one pearl of great price went and sold all that they had and bought it. The treasure, Christ, more precious than all the earthly treasure that one could accumulate when received, brings earthen treasure and heavenly treasure into focus. One fades in its importance. It's still important. You know, Jesus told us when we would talk how to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus knows that we have these needs, you know. And what you know, basically, you know, Jesus sets this teaching up and then he begins to teach about what? All the anxiety and all the worry and all the cares that we have in our lives. That's what the uh, the remainder of chapter six talks about. And if we could just settle this issue about the treasures, the, the things that we yearn for that we think are so important, so meaningful. God, I have it. You know, and not that those things are bad. None of those things are bad. There's nothing wrong with a career. There's nothing wrong with, you know, with having a home. There's nothing wrong with, with those things. But, but it's when they're out of balance. It's when, it's when our, our hearts are gripped by those things. And that's what, that's what Jesus here is really talking about. Okay? Jesus, uh, Paul says in Philippians 3.20, this is a great verse, for our citizenship is in heaven. Think about that. Our citizenship is in heaven. Well, you know, I'm a citizen of the United States of America. Amen. In my earthly, my earthly citizenship, I wouldn't want to be in any other country than the USA. Okay? Amen. But, but the reality is that my citizenship, my citizenship here is only going to be for a limited period of time. A set period of time by God, but my citizen, my citizenship in heaven is forever. Just think about that. This is just the this is just the intro, and yet we are we to focus the intro to the main event by pursuing the things of this world. Are the things of this world evil? No, but it's what they do to us. Many times they separate us from God. And they rob us of the things that God would have us to do and which has to do with everything perhaps later on in heaven. He says, for our citizenship is in heaven which we eagerly await for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we should not be living our lives thinking that this is it. This is it. Sorry about that. You know, no, this isn't it. This is the intro. 
This is the introduction. Okay. If this is all that it is, then I guess maybe you'd, you'd better just grab it all. But it isn't. And know how the world, how the devil, and how others, whatever, just try to make it make it seem like this, this is what it all is. So just, you know, just focus all your life on it because you got one life to live. No, you got, you know, you have one life to live, but it doesn't end. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection life. He who what, believes in me will never, what, die. Holy. Now, we're going to take off this physical body, but, amen, we're going to put on immortality. And so... So I, I believe that we're to enjoy. I believe that we're to enjoy life. Now, I'm not talking about being so prudent and so and you know and so I don't know what the word to expect. You know that you know that you know that we're to suffer through this world, and yet and yet we we will experience that as well, some more than others. But I believe that we can we can enjoy this the journey. We can enjoy the journey. We should enjoy our families. We should enjoy our friends, our church. We should enjoy the things that God has given to us. But we should not worship them. We should not, our hearts should be not so invested in them that we can't live without them. And that's really what the Lord here is, is really telling us that. You know, Solomon, remember Solomon, the Proverbs. <laughs> you know, he came up with the conclusion of what? He had everything. He had everything, any man. I don't know about you women. Now, I don't know about I don't know about some of you men. Some of you men who would want I don't know how many wives, and, you know, uh, four hundred over. You know, I, 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 anyway, I got problems living with one. Okay, <laughs> Hallelujah, and she's not the problem. I'm the one. I'm the problem. Okay, all right, all right. So, but Solomon, after after gaining it all, having it all, what did he say about it? It's meaningless. It's meaningless. When it comes to the meaning of life, to what is really important, what we should really value and cherish, is what here. It's not the things. So when you get to heaven, we're going to wind this down. We're going to wrap this up. So when you get to heaven and the treasure of your heart is laid out, what's going to be there? You gonna take your cars with you? Take your take your diamonds and take your money and take your position and take your diplomas and take your your accolades and your awards and all these things that you know. I mean, hey, if you did all those things for the glory of God and they became means by which God was able to fulfill His purposes in your life, then maybe so. I don't think the cars and houses are going to be there because he's got something. He's preparing another house for us, amen? And I don't know if we're going to need cars or anything like that. I kind of believe that we're going to fly in heaven, amen? <laughs> I mean, I kind of, I kind of really do, you know? Or we're going to have one of those mind things and we can just go wherever we need to go, amen? And, you know, and so, but I, I'm sorry. My mind goes a little crazy. That's where you, you, know, you need to watch our minds sometimes when you start thinking about some of these things because we can get a little crazy, right? All right. So when you get to heaven and the treasure of your heart is laid out, for where your treasure is, there is your heart. When you're in heaven and, and your treasure is laid out before you and you look at it and say, man, meaningless. Meaningless. Is that what you're going to say? Empty. Some will sadly say, well, at least I made it to heaven. You know, and that's, well, what vision, what, what lack of vision that we have for our lives then? You know, sadly for some, very little tr true treasure will follow them to heaven. But the good news is this. The good news is this. Is that you can begin, you can begin even right now. Wherever you are, and that's the wonderful thing about Jesus, man. Wherever you are in your, in your life. Even if you're a believer and if you've kind of gotten off track, focus too much on the things of this world and whatever, he'll help you bring that into perspective. Many of us need the Holy Spirit to help us to keep these things in perspective because they can override sometimes, overpower us. Okay? But the good thing is, is that is that we can begin any time to start making deposits into 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 heaven. Amen, where our treasure. 
where we can begin to start making deposits in the spiritual trust and savings of us. <laughs> or whatever you call it in heaven. So how do we begin? Very easily. Just two things. You know, you begin, you, first of all, you need to trust Christ as your Savior and Lord. When you trust Christ for your Savior, you trust Him to be your Savior, your Lord, for your salvation. You see, when you do that, your citizenship is established. Amen? I don't want to be a citizen of hell. I don't want no parts of it, okay? All right? Your citizenship in heaven is what is secured because we want we put our trust in Jesus Christ. And so we're going to do that in just, in just a moment. But the second thing is, is that we trust Jesus Christ. We trust him with our lives. We trust him with our heart. Okay? That we, we do that by what? Giving Jesus our heart. You know, we, we trust him as Savior and Lord. Amen. Yes. But now we need to take it to the next step in that we need to begin to trust him with our lives leading us and guiding us and, and showing us the, the where, the when, and to whom that we might start storing up treasures in heaven. Amen. And I'm not, uh, I'm, you know, it's not a, a, a competition. No, I believe each one of us by design have things that we need to be storing up in heaven. And so what a glorious day that is going to be. Amen? It's going to be a great, great, great day. So I want you to bow your head with me. And if you need to trust Christ as your Savior and your Lord, I want to pray for you. And it's just very a very simple prayer. You know, and maybe you need to rededicate your, your life. You know, maybe you've kind of gotten off the track a little bit and you just need to get back on track. Well, why don't you just pray this prayer with me right now. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, Amen. That he will that he will hear your prayer, he will forgive you, and he will he will what he will adopt you into his family. Into and he is our heavenly father. So pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. That you are the treasure of God's heart that was sent to this world to forgive me of my sin. And so I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior, to forgive me of all my sin. I receive you by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's just a simple prayer. When you do that, the Bible tells us that we're, what we are, we are born again. Now I want to pray a second prayer, you know, because I know you know, hey, I've been around, been around the mountain a few times, and I'm kind of getting up there in years. You can't tell with my gray hair because it looks. Well, I don't have much gray hair, but vanity, vanity. Okay, shut up. But anyway, but let me just tell you, you can trust Jesus Christ with your life. Amen. You can trust him with your life. You can trust him with your heart. And I don't believe that brings any greater joy than us, for us to be serving God, to be expressing that, to be, to be laying up treasures in heaven, because that's what, that's what, what, because that's what's in your heart. It's just a byproduct of what is in your heart that you're that you're kind, that you're, you know, that you are serving, that you are a blessing, and and you don't get caught up in the things of you know, the things of this world, but you're caught up in the word of God and the will of God. That's what that's what He's asked us to do. So l let us pray together, and it's, it's it's probably a daily prayer that we have to make. Amen. So once you just join one. Join with me again. Dear Jesus, I thank you that I can commit my heart to you and that I can trust you not only with my salvation, but I can trust you with my life. And Lord God, I desire to do your will. And that was a part of the prayer that we studied a few weeks back when, when, when Jesus you know, taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Lord, we ask for your will to be done in our lives. God, we know that we live in this world, but we're not to be of this world. God. Lord, we, you know, we don't believe that, the, that all the things of this world are evil and, 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 and sinister and they're bad for us. Lord, you created this world for us to enjoy, but Lord, you have not created this world for us to worship it. God, to love it beyond you know, beyond limits, so oh God, that we are to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
So Lord, help each one of us, Lord, to Lord, to really look at these verses and to apply these things into our life. And we need to ask every now and again, you know, what is my what does my treasure look like? What does it consist of? And we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit that, that helps us. And as we surrender to him, that he will that he will lead us to be like Jesus, to walk like Jesus. <coughs> To, to live on this earth like Jesus lived. Lord, this is what we're studying here. It's about kingdom living. Living as, as children of the kingdom of God. And so, Lord, we need your help. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that, ex that assists us, that comes alongside us and helps us, oh God, Lord, Lord, to keep this world in perspective. God, hallelujah. And Lord, to keep a heavenly view. And God, we just give you praise for it. We give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. We look forward to seeing you, uh, seeing you Sunday. And so please join in Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And Lord bless you and have a great evening.